Hello, my name is Polina Kornilov. I'm a PhD student working with Professor Bernard Atali's lab at the Tel Aviv University in Israel. I will present the video summary of our paper, Capturing Distinct KCNQ2 Channel Resting State by Metal Ion Bridges in the Voltage Sensor Domain, published in the Journal of General Physiology in November 2014. KCNQ channels comprise a subfamily of voltage-gated potassium channels. In the brain, the KCNQ2 subunit co-assemble with KCNQ3 to generate the M current, a slowly activating, non-inactivating potassium current. The M current has profound effect on neuronal excitability, as it acts as a break for repetitive firing. In humans, mutation in KCNQ2 and KCNQ3 are associated with benign non forms of epilepsy or with severe epileptic encephalopathy. Like in all KV channels, KCNQ2 and KCNQ3 subunit comprise two transmembrane modules, the voltage sensor domain and a pore region. The four subunits assemble as tetramer. It is commonly recognized that four highly conserved arginine residues along the S4 mainly contribute to the voltage-driving gating charge transfer during channel activation. The gating charges rise in aqueous crevice and translocate across a focused electrical field where hydrophobic residues form a plug that occludes the gating pore. Along this narrow path, the positively charges in S4 are stabilized by electrostatic interaction with negative counter charge in S2 and S3, water depots in the crevice and negatively charges phospholipids. Except for the most recently described resting state structure of voltage-gated proton channel HV1, all crystal structures of different voltage-gated potassium and sodium channels have captured the voltage sensor domain in its activated conformation. The voltage sensor resting state have been the focus of intense experimental and modeling work. Most of them were performed in the shaker potassium channel. However, very few studies have addressed this issue in other KV channels. In this work, we aim to address this issue in KCNQ2 channels. In principle, if two externally accessible cysteines are close enough to each other, they should be able to form metal bridges after external application of cadmium ions or to form covalent disulfide bonds. The wild-type KCNQ2 subunit has only two externally accessible cysteine. Those are cysteine 106 in S1 and cysteine 242 in S5. We initially introduced single cysteine mutation into the S4 segment of KCNQ2 subunit and compared the propensity of wild-type and mutant KCNQ2 channels to form metal bridges after external application of cadmium. Recording of the S4 mutants S-195C, R-198C and R-201C without reducing agent DTT result in a very small current. In contrast, a large increase in current amplitude was observed after external exposure of the cells to 100 micromolar DTT for 15 minutes. This implies that in those S4 mutants this sulfid bond probably forms spontaneously and stabilizes the channel in their closed state. Thus, to prevent this sulfid bond formation, channels were systematically pre-incubated for half an hour in the presence of 100 micromolar DTT. In contrast to wild-type KCNQ2, S4 mutants were highly responsive to externally added 100 micromolar cadmium. They show a dramatic reduction in current amplitude, which was reversible upon extensive washout, suggesting a strong cadmium coordination. Those results indicate that upon cadmium treatment, metal bridges were formed, which stabilized the mutant channel in the closed state conformation. To find the residue that is sufficiently close to coordinate cadmium with the cysteine S4 mutants, we mutated each of the two externally accessible endogenous cysteine into alanine. Double mutation of C106A and C242A with the S4 mutant were examined. Our results indicate that marked current inhibition 
was still observed after external exposure to cadmium in each of the three C242A double mutant channel. In contrast, a significant attenuation in the cadmium inhibitor effect was found in the three double mutant containing C106A. Those results indicate that cadmium could be coordinated by each of the cysteine S4 mutant and C106 in S1. We explore the state dependence of disulfide bond formation using copper phenoltroline, which catalyzed the covalent disulfide crosslink of closely located cysteine. We initially examined the tendency of each of the mutant to form covalent bonds after copper phenoltroline application at depolarizing voltage, which reflect the channel open state. We found that copper phenoltroline had virtually no effect on the mutant channels in their open state conformation. We then exposed the cells to copper phenoltroline at hyperpolarizing voltages and measured the current amplitude following channel opening. We observe a dramatic reduction in the current amplitude of all three mutants, which could be reversed by externally perfused with one millimolar DTT. Collectively, those results suggest that covalent disulfide bond are likely to form in the voltage sensor downstate conformation between residues cysteine S4 mutants and cysteine 106 in S1. Using a concatenated tetrameric KCMQ2 channel, we determine whether cadmium coordinate between R198C and C106 occurs within the same monomer or between two adjusts subunits. Our data confirm that in the channel closed state, residue 198 in S4 is close to C106 in S1 within the voltage sensor domain of the same subunit. Initial attempts to drive resting state model of KCNQ2 based on the previously published model of KCNQ1 failed because it did not fit with all our experimental constraints. This is probably because KCNQ channels display more than one closed state. To overcome this limitation, three distinct closed state models of KCNQ2 were constructed by applying each of our cadmium bridge constraints. In the open state model, the third and the fourth gating charges in S4 form salt bridges in S2 with glutamate 130 and glutamate 130. In addition, the hydrophobic residue phenylalanine 137 is located between the two interacting pairs. The C3 deep resting state model emerges from cadmium bridges formed between cysteine 195 in S4 and cysteine 106 in S1. In this resting state model, the first gating charge arginine 198 and the second gating charge arginine 201 of S4 form salt bridges with glutamate 130 and glutamate 140 of S2, which stabilize the channel C3 closed state. The interacting pairs are located above and below the highly conserved phenylalanine 137. The C2 resting state model emerges from cadmium bridges formed between cysteine 198 in S4 and cysteine 106 in S1. In this closed state, the S4 gating charge arginine 201 in S4 is sufficiently close to glutamate 130 in S2 to form salt bridges and glutamine residue 204 in S4 is at hydrogen bonding distance from glutamate 140 in S2. The C1 resting state model emerges from the cadmium bridges formed between cysteine 201 in S4 and cysteine 106 in S1. In this closed state, the third gating charge arginine 207 in S4 is sufficiently close to glutamate 140 to form salt bridge. This study reveals that residue cysteine 106 in S1 can be very close to several N-terminal S4 residues for stabilizing different KCNQ2 resting states. This is in line with previous studies performed in the shaker channels 
and show that the analogous S1 position is a Lutzin 241 constrain the resting state of S4 with respect to S1. Our data confirm the importance of residue arginine 201 in stabilizing the resting state of casein Q2 by engaging into ion pairs with glutamate in S2. Finally, this work shows that despite certain differences, the casein Q2 resting state models meet with the emerging consensus of voltage sensor resting state models of KV channels. Thank you for your attention.